Hey everyone and welcome to Almost Cancelled, I am Peter, that is Connor and we are going to talk about Riverdale Season 1 Episode 2, it's called Chapter 2, A Touch of Evil, full spoilers for the episode as always. First thing I'm going to say about this is I actually think that this is very much part 2 of the pilot and they could have easily edited those first two together and it would have made a cohesive whole. I agree, Uh, my one thing that maybe that I'd say against that is I wonder if that's going to be something you could have said about everything. That's why it's chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Like, I'll always feel that way. I can't really argue that until I've seen Yeah, exactly. Three, but I, I understand where you're coming from as well. It's, it's really just because it felt like at the end of this episode, it felt like they'd really set up what the show was. Because that's yeah, when... the hook. It gave you the core four characters that we've got. You know, Jughead finally met Veronica and it was all four of them together and they'd, they'd settled their hatches. They'd, they'd set up what the the underlying tension is going to be like between Betty and Veronica over Archie, and you know Jughead's back to being Archie's friend, but it really felt like it all came together at the end, and everything that was going on in the last episode that was spilled over into this one. Obviously, the the murder mystery is going to keep on going. There's lots of threads that are going to keep being there, but it felt like a lot of them had arcs, especially Archie. Archie's arc was mostly in this half than it was in the it last was. weeks. Which is why I feel like it was one two-hour episode as opposed to yeah, two. I feel like they may have aired it as a double, but they wanted it to have the supernatural lead in. So Pro- probably I don't get me wrong. I don't think it, they suffered too much from it. I think the only real thing I noticed last week was we said, "Oh, Archie doesn't seem that interesting compared to some of the other cast members," and I think it's because he didn't get his full whack yeah. until this week. So I'm happy to say that I do care a bit more about him this this week. Mm. Because he, he does have uh, an arc. Obviously, a lot of it's about his morals and how he's not willing to accept. I mean, they didn't introduce that last week, that he's, he wants to tell someone about the hearing the gunshot. Yeah, but this was uh, really focusing in on it. Yeah, it, that was really his core thing. He got up in the middle of the night, he went for a jog round to <laughs> round to Miss Grundy's house, and he ha- tried to talk to her about it, and she's like, no. And yeah, just did, did, well, did no, no shirt, just, ah, I'll go for a jog. That was a good point, actually. I, I felt like the opening 10 minutes of this, they had an excuse to have Archie with his shirt off as much as humanly possible. Yep. Because even before he goes for the jog, there's a bit in the, the house when he's like just in his underwear. Yeah. It's like, if he was actually just going for a jog, I could kind of see it. Like, you know, people do do that. But you're going round to someone's... You, he knew where he was going. Yeah. The whole, uh, like, put a top on, dude. <laughs> I mean... Don't get me wrong, this usually happens much more to the female characters than it does the male characters, so I'm not going to say, oh, this is an outrage any more so than it is any other no, time. No, no, but it's, it would be weird either way. Uh, but, aye, but it's just, I'm just pointing out that this felt especially noticeable. It's like, oh, no, we need the beefcake on display here. That's, no, don't get me wrong, though. In that same scene when he looks across the window, Betty's in under- underwear too. I mean, do yeah, it, it makes more they're, sense. They're in their bedrooms. Because they're in be their fair. bedrooms. But they are both in their underwear. Yeah. And you feel like they could have wore pyjamas. They could have done. That, just... that one, it, like I said, it didn't bother me as much because they're in their own bedrooms, whatever. Oh yeah, it's realistic. It's just, if, if for argument's sake, they could be wearing pyjamas and that could be a way to yeah. avoid it being a bit more sexually yeah. tantalising. Yeah, but like I said, it was just the one where he goes out and goes yeah. to a house without putting that, that stood out as like, really? Yeah. Why? Yeah, that, that was it. So he, he tries to convince her and then he, he really likes to get to him when he's at school so he goes and talks to her again and she, for the first time outside of the flashbacks, actually gets affectionate and says, oh no, but if, if we do that we can really never be together again and mm. she kind of goes in for a kiss or whatever and I'm like, is she playing him? It's just, it's just her It feels mate. like it, didn't it? It, it felt like it, because when Jughead brings it up and I'm like, yeah, Jughead's on the ball he knows, he knows what's going on here uh, I I was like, ah, oh, she's playing him, and I, I felt kind of bad for him. But I, it's funny that we're talking about this first because I feel like the teacher stuff, the, the the affair, is still my least favorite element of the show. I agree. And it's not like some people, of course, are saying there's some controversy. It's glorifying statutory rape. I my problem isn't even with that. My problem is just that it's it's really uh, trite and cliched and all I, these. I, think I preferred it a bit more this week, where it is, oh, she's playing him. Like, I, mm. I prefer that angle to just it being the more straight version that we got before. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I get what you're saying there. But I, it's still kind of like, I, I could take it or leave it. It's like, so much of what the show does is kind of cliched, because it is playing on all these tropes, and 
Archie, the comics, kind of invented a lot of them. Yeah. But this one in particular just feels kind of out of touch and feels like, yeah, all high school shows do this where they have a, a student with a teacher affair and it always feels... I think the worst part about it, and this is what really got to me as I was watching the episode, is that it felt really forced into everything else. Because a lot of the other episode is Betty and Veronica, and mm. Betty's got her feelings for Archie, Veronica feels that she's kind of overstepped her bounds, and that's a big thing around the episode. And I felt like, do we need him also banging a teacher? He's already part of this core love triangle, which is going to be a big part of the show forever. Yeah. Do we need him also banging a teacher? No, I agree. So it feels more tacked on in that sense, because it's extra. Yeah. When the rest of it is a lot more uh, interesting. And not because love triangles are interesting. In fact, normally when a love triangle comes up, I uh, roll my eyes. I groan. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> but here it's the core concept of the show. It's the whole point is that this relationship between these characters is the, the Yeah, you, you, you give it slack because of where this has come from, where this is kind of Love Triangle 101. Yeah, it created the Love Triangle. I mean, it probably didn't. I'm sure there's stories with Love yeah, Triangles totally before that. It totally popularised it. It popular, yeah. Especially amongst teenage sort of stories, I think. Yeah. Uh, but I think it works a lot better because we actually care about, I think, to an extent, all three of the characters involved. I agree. Like, Archie was less so, but... And to be know. fair, he's probably, out of the four main characters, Jughead being the fourth. And that's another reason why I think it's very much two parts of the pilot is because Jughead is way more in this half than he was in the last one. Yeah. And I think he's like one of the core four. You know, he's the, the if there's four pillars of the show, he's the the fourth one. Definitely. And I like Jughead, I like Betty, I like Veronica, and I like Archie now as well. But I still say Archie's my least favourite of the four. I agree. Quite easily, actually. Yeah. And it's not that he's bad, it's just he's, yeah, he's a bit more... Yeah, all, all the others have got more stuff going for him that I'm much more interested in. Yeah, but Bet, Betty's very conflicted with herself. She's sort of questioning what she wants to be, you know, instead of what her mother wants her to be. And it's dealing with her feelings. And she tries to cope with the fact that, oh, me and Archie are just friends. And they, they kind of make up and they have that nice conversation in the in the street about it. But then she kind of breaks down later when he's playing guitar and she starts having yeah. flashes about it. It's a little bit melodramatic, but I think what makes it work for me a little bit more in this show is one, it's aware of when it's using a cliche. It knows it's doing it. Yeah. The, the writing's fairly self-aware. But two, I think the writing's just a little bit better and the acting's just a little bit better than most shows that have this kind of thing. Yeah, definitely. The acting is a, a lot better than I expected, actually. It's a lot, yeah, it's a lot better. Even someone like Cheryl, who's evil. <laughs> and, well, yeah. Evil may be a strong word. But she really, she really ham, like, hams it up in a good way. Like, she's really loving the evilness of the character. Yeah. And I think that I think that helps a lot. I feel like they all know who they're playing. And I think the big reason why I like this show, actually, beyond having fun with the stuff and the the, the, the murder mystery Twin Peaks esque, which by the way, speaking of Twin Peaks esque, where the scene where the the sheriff's announcing it over the the tannoy to the mm. the students, that felt super Twin Peaks. Even the music that was coming in, there was that that kind of the slow synths. Do you know what? Yeah. I noticed at the end there, uh, Blake Neely. <coughs> that man is busy as shit. I, know. I mean, and I, I know his core CW team for all the, the superhero shows. There's only four of them. So, like, the, taking on another one? Like, oh my God, where do they find the time? One person per show. Easy. Well, yeah, t- pretty much. That is kind of how it works. But, <laughs> Until but now. now. This is a, th- yeah, exactly. <laughs> now this is a fifth. <laughs> hmm. Crazy. But that felt super Twin Peaks. Even the the autopsy scene as well, which we, we don't get to see the actual autopsy, but we see... The mortician talking to yeah. Betty's mum, who I didn't even realise was like a reporter at this point. I, I, maybe they mentioned it last week. I can't remember, but I missed it last week as well. Uh, yeah. I'll be honest. Because she may said something to her dad about, oh, I need to dig into this. She's like, oh, he's not even in the, she, he's not even in the ground yet. And, you know, he cracks a line. I was like, what are they talking about? And then she shows up at the morgue with her tape recorder, and I'm like, oh, okay, right. She's yeah. And she pays off the mortician for the info. Yeah, but no, but like is a very Twin Peaks esque. Uh, Cheryl interrupting and taking over in, yeah. during the tannoy. That that felt a lot like that. It did feel. It was definitely a CW version of Twin Peaks, but it was definitely Twin Peaksy. Yeah, it's kind of got that spirit. Yeah, especially when she ends it with a hashtag thing. Yeah. But uh, no. So what I was saying is, I what I think I really like about this show, outside of that stuff, is that it has a style. It feels like it has an identity where the town itself feels like a character, and everything about it. Like all the cars feel like they're kind of old school. Uh, the fact that all the, the high school jocks are actually wearing the Letterman jackets 
Yeah. You, you've yeah. Got, it, it feels like it's really trying to be the most Paul P. Teen show that ever was. It's going all out for it, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's not trying to say, oh, we're more hip. So we're trying to be, I don't know, the OC. I never watched the OC, but you know these different shows that had high skill. But it's, it's leaning into just the core concept. Yeah, it, and it's it feels like it's trying to be the the textbook version of this to to the extent where we're going to play with all the tropes, but it's you know. Yeah. So I, I appreciate that, and it felt you know it, something as simple as them walking down the street. It just it feels like it's got its own tone, its own look. It doesn't. L- it doesn't look like a typical CW show. It doesn't, and that's to its credit. Yeah, it's got a style. I think that's good. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I bet in Veronica, let's, let's go there. So, Betty <laughs> seems okay with Veronica. Veronica <laughs> gives flowers to the like the reception of the school. Because when you're a student and you're giving a present to another student, you give the them to the reception. The reception, yeah. Yeah, because that's what students do. Obviously. Yeah, last but Veronica, maybe that's the part of the point. Though is Veronica is such a stuck-up kind of she's rich so girl. out of touch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I can accept that. Uh, which was a fun scene because you, you you've got Kevin, yeah, like reacting the opposite way to Betty the entire scene because he yeah. he thinks she should be pissed and I should be awful at her. But like like Archie, she acts fine until she breaks down and she ends up trying to befriend Cheryl just to upset Veronica. Yeah. I really like the bit though, just after the flowers and Kevin's like, "What are you doing?" She's like, "Ah, eh, give it a week. She'll she'll be on to someone else. It's fine. This is the easiest way." Path of least resistance, I believe, is yeah, the, yeah, it the was. Phrase. So, but then, yeah, then she has that that stuff with Cheryl and Cheryl. We've been seeing throughout the episode, and her hers kind of bleeds into a lot of the plot, so it's hard to stick yeah. to her. But she has she has that scene where they go for the the the, the vouchers that Veronica gave her for a, a pedicure and manicure and like a day at the spa or whatever it was. Uh, by the way, I think I learned more slang for pedicures and manicures in this episode than I'd ever heard in my life before. Could you could you regale me with some of these new ones that you learned? I believe they called it a petty. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you I just that one. I, I, I guess I, I thought that was the common one. I don't talk to people who, who talk to me about appointments for pedicures. <laughs> but I, I don't know. I just feel like in, in TV they, they was a mani pedi, you know, so you get both. Clearly, you're watching different things I, from I me. I just thought that was like a common <laughs> vocabulary <laughs> term. I don't know how you don't know this. It's also in my wheelhouse. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> I'm just saying it's it's like basic knowledge. <laughs> it's not basic. knowledge. That is pretty basic knowledge. Come I'm on. sure people are going to agree with me on this one. Sure. I don't know. There was a few, though. People. There was a few. They said right. a few. Anyway, the the point I was getting at <laughs> is we have this scene. So after they've had their, their day at the spa or whatever, and Betty and Cheryl are in uh, Betty's bedroom, and Cheryl is making those like compliments, but there's like bitchiness behind it. You know, she's actually yeah, it's just making fun of snidish the remarks. And... She starts asking questions. And you're like, oh, she's just she's only doing this because she wants information about Betty's sister who dated her brother, so that if in case he knows something and so on, and she starts getting very sort of spiteful with it. And it's like, oh, did that cow murder my brother or something? You know, it was she got very hostile, and Betty, good on Betty. She sticks up for herself and tells it to get the hell out of her house. Yeah, it was a good good moment. Well, it's because I didn't. I kind of expected it not to go that way. Well, I, I think a big part of Betty's thing is she kept like not letting her emotions out, and this was her finally getting to yeah. untap and really let loose. So that for the rest of the episode, when she does meet up with Veronica again and she apologizes and they make up, you know, after the whole uh, the pep rally and all that, it it's because she's finally been able to like confront her feelings and she's not just bottling everything up. She's mm-hmm. she's acknowledged what she was making her upset and so on. And she makes up with Archie as well. And that's the great moment at the end of the episode because they, they go for the uh, the milkshakes that pops at the end and Archie comes in and she looks around and she sort of contemplates and she's like, you guys want to join us? And that's how we get our four together. Not to gloss over the fact that in the other half of the episode, uh, Archie and Jughead made up. And they had a great yeah. moment at the pep rally where... Because Jughead finds out, he, he, he catches Archie and Grundy sort of... Kissing in the classroom. Making with a nice, nice through the window. Yeah, really, guys. Stupid. Move over to the corner or something where it's harder to see. <laughs> you know there's a, a window on that door. Anyone could walk past. What are you doing? Uh, but you know, you know. 
I mean, he's ginger for a start. Yeah, but I'm blaming this on her. Oh, she should know better, but he's ginger, so he almost gets a pass. That's true. But uh, so he he conf- confronts Archie. He's like, oh, so that's and we find out that they had plans for summer and Archie bailed because he was having a fling with the teacher. He wanted to buy. Too fair. Pretty good reason. Well, I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to get laid. It, it it's as good as any. I feel like Jughead would probably understand. Like, how often do I get to have an affair with a teacher? Right. I'm sure you'd understand. But you didn't tell him. You lied to him. Yeah. You lied to him. You stood him up. Of course he's yeah, upset. Yeah, yeah. That's that's where it gets a bit murky. A bit murky. And but they have this great thing with Archie and we've seen it throughout all the episode that he can't he can't live with not giving the police information without telling someone and he he, he tells Jughead and he apologizes and they have have this next moment. And I like the Jughead responds with like nah nah, nah like I don't know if we're ready to call his friend yet, but we can discuss it over burgers. And obviously Jughead's thing is he always eats burgers. So mm. that, that was a nice touch. Again, this is why it felt kind of like the second half of the pilot, because it it was bringing in these core character things where, oh, Jughead likes burgers. <laughs> this is, yeah. So we've had it mentioned. We had one Archikins in the last half. So There's a, there's a few of those, like uh, Cheryl's twin tuition. Twin tuition, yes. <laughs> I like that one. Yeah, lines like that. Of course, uh, Cheryl had a. So she was acting fine all episode. She was dissecting the frog. She was making her catty comments. But she had a little bit of a breakdown during the pep rally when she sees Archie running in the, the ginger hair <laughs> reminds her of her brother. <laughs> and she has a vision of her brother. It was so cheesy. But because, I love it. <laughs> because all gingers look alike, as you know, Carl. <laughs> of course. <As> you know. <laughs> to be fair. I mean, you could look at just some of the comments that we have had over past videos comparing <laughs> me to various people. There was a lot of them. And then the occasional comment that say I'm also ginger, which I don't get and I don't understand. And how dare you, people? How dare you? Yeah, I don't want him lumped in with us. <laughs> but she, so she sees the ginger hair and it, yeah. it triggers her. She's like, oh, ginger hair like my brother. And she has these romantic thoughts about her brother. I'm... I'm, I'm adding my own thoughts to this <laughs> but it seems romantic and she runs off and cries and Veronica goes and gives her a gives her a hug and I think that's obviously what Bet- when Betty sees that she truly realises that Veronica is trying to be a better person yes she recognises that in her and that's kind of what more than anything else actually prompts her to ask her out for the milkshake after after the rally uh, which by the way I thought that that whole cheerleading sequence uh, was done very well because they, they had that whole thing where it was like in the middle of a well, not a storm, but it was raining. You know, it was heavily raining. Yeah. And they were all... all that sounds really dirty. All, they were all getting wet. And, but I I think it... What it did... And I I feel like it's not a show that you want to overanalyze too much. But it was like... No, okay, this town's going through a dark time, but they're going to continue on as normal. So that was kind of represented with the cheerleading yeah. going through the entire routine. They're giving it their all. Veronica's doing a whole thing where she's going down the middle and it's pissing down the rain and they don't care. They're just doing it. Yeah. And for me, that was kind of like a, this is what this whole town's going to do. Mm. It's going through this dark time, we're going to have this murder mystery, but the town's going to go on. And yeah. So. Uh, yeah. But no, I really liked the ending. Uh, obviously, that wasn't, the, the final scene of the diner wasn't the actual final scene, but I, I liked that. As yeah, a, yeah. As a coming together, ending of the, the two-parter. It made really sense, didn't it? It was like this, it felt like the conclusion to that first part. Yeah, here's a here's core group, here's a status quo. Uh, and obviously, the other thing that Jughead obviously was able to forgive Archie for was that Archie jumped in when he the, the, when Reggie was picking on him and yeah. trying to pick a fight, and Archie went to town on him. Um, he got a, a tasty black eye. He did indeed, uh, which is a sign of true friendship. He was wasn't right. again. It's shown kind Arch- of went down like a chump though, didn't he? <laughs> well, he's ginger. Uh, I know, but you, you keep <laughs> showing us that he's ripped. They 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 insist on like showing us how ripped he is. And he, 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 he takes one punch and down he goes. I mean, he's, he's not expected a fighter. better. He's clearly a lover, not a fighter. I think that's quite <laughs> clear. But I, th- I think, uh, again, it's shown Archie's morals. It's shown that he is trying to be a good person, which is nice because it's balancing out, oh, he's having an affair with a teacher. Not that I think that necessarily makes him a bad person, but just that idea that that's the one thing that he's doing that he shouldn't be doing. And yeah. the outcome of that being that he has this evidence that he's not been able to talk about is eating at him. So it's yeah. really building him up to be this noble person who wants to do the right thing and maybe stumbles out of it. Uh, by the way, I like the idea that Betty says to Archie, oh, don't tell my mum we're friends again because her mum's like, no, I don't want you tying out with yeah, yeah. those. 
Because it's not actually Betty's parents, it's actually more Veronica's dad. But the idea that he has to always like like duck and dive and run away from him in the comics, that's, that's a thing. Right. Uh, from Veronica's dad when he's dating Veronica. So it's not the exact same thing, but that idea that he has to do, like hide from the girl's parents is very mm. much a thing from the comics. So it's just a nice little touch. Makes sense. I, I also like the, the Pussycats playing the uh, Sugar Sugar song. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I feel like maybe, maybe they'll get some actual plot at some point, but so far it's been a case of no, they're coming in to sing a song each episode. Yeah. But I like this one because that's synonymous with Archie in general. Hmm. So, yeah. made sense. Uh, uh, obviously, the end of the last episode had that little bit of narration from Jughead, uh, who, which they brought back. That seems to be a running thing. He's going to be blogging and giving yeah. some narration to the episodes. But it ended with him saying, oh, someone's going to get arrested in like whatever period uh, on Tuesday. And that ended mm. up being something that happened at the end. They come in and they, they take away Cheryl. And she stands up and says she's guilty. She never says she murdered anyone, though, which means she's definitely not done that. No, no. She just says, I am guilty. Of incest. Quite possibly. That's not going to lie. Is where my mind is at at this point. Yeah. Jughead said they found stuff in the body that was surprising. Uh, obviously, I, I think next week we'll find out what some of that is. But I, I, I don't know if you can... <laughs> I, I jokingly said when someone said, what did they find? I said, oh, some of his sisters just was in his body. <laughs> I don't know if you can detect that. Because yeah, I mean, like, a man and a woman have sex. If they yeah, find a dead yeah. woman, they can tell. Yeah, you can do it the other way around. Can you? I'm just curious. I, I'm assuming so. You probably can. Yeah, I imagine you could. could. <laughs> Unless the, the, the river just washed it away. Also possible. I, also. I mean, I don't know. I'm no expert. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. oh, but I'm glad that some of her friends speculated that she may have something to do with it because that was my first thought. Like, she's the one that said he drowned and now he's turned up with a bullet in the yeah, head. Yeah, like, would the police not come straight for her? You would think so. They also, the other fact that we find out at the end from the narration is that he actually died a week later than everyone thought he did. Which is interesting because obviously we heard the gunshot. Yeah, we heard the gunshot on July 4th. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So that kind of throws the timeline. So it's like, what was that gunshot then if it wasn't the gunshot that killed him? Hell, I mean, it's not, it's not a giant leap to have more than one gunshot, but you're right, yeah. What well, it's was not, that? I mean, yeah. what was that? Who was that? And It's obviously something we're going to answer because Archie heard it and they've talked about it, so it's going to come up. Yeah, it is. But I just thought that's, that's clearly part of the, the ongoing mystery. Although maybe that's because obviously Archie says, right, I'm going to go and tell the, the, the headmaster in the morning about this. And he doesn't because he's with the sheriff and that's when they're going to get Cheryl, so it kind of yeah. like cuts him off. I'm wondering if finding out that the, the murder was actually a week later, it'll stop him from, oh, I don't have to bother now because it's not... <laughs> maybe for now, until yeah. something else happens. And we're like, oh, okay. Because maybe it's not relevant. At least he might think that, because if the murder's a week later. Yeah. yeah. yeah it still possible. could be re- related, of course. It could be someone saying, bang, come with me or I'll shoot you. <laughs> you know. Could be. So I mean, we, we just don't know, do we? We don't. But, no, nah, so... I'm still saying there's total uh, redhead incest gingerception going on uh, between the the Blossom twins. I'm I'm kind of inclined to agree. Yeah, but no, I'm loving the core group. I'm loving they're together. Uh, the ultra pulpy high schoolness of it all. Uh, yeah, I I do enjoy. It, it is it's walking a very fine line. So is it? So far, it's on the right side of it. So far, it's on the right side for us anyway. Because I, I think yeah. obviously there's the. The, the version of this show that we didn't want and that we're, we were worried it was going to be would obviously appeal to a lot of people. Like These shows are popular, but... It is, which which makes it all the more admirable that it's stuck to this side. Or at least this is what it wants to be. It's mm. telling us that. Because it would have been very easy for it to just lean into all of it and presumably get even better ratings because they typically do have very good ratings. They do. But uh, hopefully it keeps, keeps what we like about it and the murder mystery gets interesting. So... Oh, which it seems like they're going to be teased out over the season, which is cool. So Yeah, I believe they, they have said that, that we will find out by the end of the season. So it's not going to be ongoing forever. Oh, I expect so, yeah. 16 episodes and then they'll have some. They'll have a new mystery next season. They'll have something, yeah. Yeah, well, well it's another death or something else Yeah, crops up. So, no, uh, there we go. That's, uh, that's episode two, Archie. Still, uh, Archie, Riverdale. See, I told you that would happen last week. You did. I did tell you that would happen. I'm uh, just impressed you got through it all without saying Cherry once instead of Cherry. <laughs> I was thinking it when I was watching it. I kept thinking, oh, that's yeah. Cherry. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm surprised you made it this whole time. <laughs> oh, But that's uh, Riverdale episode two, folks. Let us know what you thought of this one in the comments below. Like and subscribe and all that stuff. Helps us out a lot if you do. 
Uh, get us on Twitter, mailed underscore fuzz. You can also get our individual Twitters on the screen. Uh, but that's us, guys. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.